So now let's look at the second common setup, fixed two sides. So here's what it means. The mass is connected to a spring on each side, and both springs are connected to fixed walls. Again, the mass is restricted to move along the x direction, and pointing to the right is positive. So what is the equivalent spring constant in this case? We'll do a free body diagram to analyze it. If we consider the mass moves a delta x to the right from the equilibrium position, then the spring on the left will be elongated and has a tendency to pull the mass back to the left. Therefore, the force from the left spring is going to be k1 times delta x to the left. We can do the same analysis to the right spring. Since the right spring is shortened by delta x, it has the tendency to go back to its original length by pushing the mass to the left. Therefore, the force generated by the right spring is equal to k2 times delta x to the left as well. Now we can write out the equation based on Newton's law f equals to ma. And since we assume the positive x is going to the right, then positive acceleration x double dot is going to the right as well. Therefore, we have the equation negative k1 times delta x minus k2 times delta x equals to positive m times x double dot. Like previously, we want to find out the equivalent system that has only one spring and perform the same. And for that system, we'll have an equation of motion looks like negative k equivalent times delta x equals to mx double dot. So if you compare these two equations, the equivalent spring constant is going to be k equals to k1 plus k2. So we can have a system look like this to satisfy the equation of motion. And this one spring has a constant of k equivalent that equals to the sum of k1 and k2. To test if our analysis is true, we're going to build these two systems and run the simulation as what we did just now. Now we're going to do the simulation in working model. Again, these two bars control the spring constant of each of the fixed spring, and this bar control the equivalent spring constant. Now k1 is going to be set to, we'll keep this number, 10 newton per meter, and k2 is going to be 20 newton per meter. And then based on our calculation, the equivalent spring constant should be the sum of these two, 10 plus 20 equals to 30 newton per meter. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run it. You can see both of the systems are freely oscillating now, and they are in sync. This is a good indication that these two systems are the same, and our calculation of the k equivalent was correct. And just now, we calculated the period of the system should be t equals to 3.63 seconds. You can again read from this figure and try to compare the experimental result and the analytical result. Now let's try some other combinations of the two spring. Let's set uh, k1 to be 20 newton per meter and k2 to be 80 newton per meter. So based on our calculation, the equivalent spring constant should be 100 newton per meter. All right, so let's run it. Again, both systems perform the same. And it's faster than before because based on our previous calculation, the spring constant become bigger and the period should become shorter. So we proved that our derivation was correct. You can try out these simulations by yourselves and play around with the numbers or maybe adding some parallel springs into the system.